what is the best arc in Dragon Ball. Now, this is going to encompass all of Dragon Ball. So, this is going to be the best arc out of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super. Hell, let's just throw GT in there too. Now remember, this is just my opinion, but anyways, here you go. The best arc in all of Dragon Ball is the Saiyan Saga. Yes, the Saiyan Saga. It is the absolute best, in my opinion. And allow me to explain why. First off, the Saiyan Saga changed Dragon Ball into what it is today. Because before, in Dragon Ball, you know, when Goku was a kid, we didn't really have that much elements that make Dragon Ball Dragon Ball. Now granted, they were there, but they weren't as prominent as they are now. We got the high speed fights, we got the constant flying around, we got the power ups, we got the beam struggles. All of that was made in the Saiyan Saga. And that's one reason why I really like Dragon Ball. Call me simple minded. Yeah, Dragon Ball can be a really simple show, but oh well, who cares? I like these people asserting their chat dominance over one another. It's really cool. And all of that was solidified in the Saiyan Saga, and it only gets more rambunctious later. Now then, here's my second point, and that is Goku. Goku's character was really made prominent here. We find out that Goku is a Saiyan, but at first, Goku rejects this. He doesn't care. He's like, hey, I don't care if you're my brother. You know, I'm talking about Raditz. He's like, I don't care if you're my brother. Get off my planet. Don't come back. And Raditz, the entire time, he's like, hey, no, you're going to come with me, and I don't care. Raditz tries to play on Goku's Saiyan nature. He's like, hey, just imagine how much blood we're going to shed. Just imagine the battle, the thrill of the battle. It's going to be amazing, so join us. And Goku's like, no, I don't want to. Get off my planet. Raditz fails to get Goku to love fighting in the heat of battle. But the ones who bring out Goku's most common trait nowadays is Nappa and Vegeta. More so Vegeta, but let me talk about Nappa first. Nappa and Vegeta have killed Goku's friends. Tien, Chaozu, Yamcha, Piccolo, they're all dead because of the Saiyans. And Goku is livid. I mean, he's downright pissed off. And then he's clowning Nappa, making him look like a fool. And then when Nappa powers up, Goku actually gets a little excited to say. He's like, ah, cool, great. I'm happy to hear that you have more power in store. Even though his friends are dead, his Saiyan nature is coming out. He's enjoying the heat of the battle, and that's made even more prominent with his fight with Vegeta. Vegeta is outclassing Goku. He's dogging him. He's making him look like a clown. And even though that the stakes are high, Goku says to himself that he's actually getting excited. He's admitting that he's excited that he gets to fight this really strong guy. And even when Krillin was about to kill Vegeta, Goku begs Krillin to stop. He begs him. Vegeta is this evil ass guy. He just killed multiple of your friends. Well, he himself didn't do it, but he indirectly killed them. And Goku is begging Krillin not to kill him. And this is where Goku's Saiyan nature comes out. He even says to himself that he thinks it is because of his Saiyan nature that he's being selfish. After all that time Raditz spent to bring out Goku's Saiyan nature, it was Vegeta who ended up bringing the Saiyan nature in Goku. And this would later on go on to shape Goku into the character we see now who just absolutely loves to fight. My third reasoning as to why this is my favorite arc is how the Saiyans are a foil to Goku. Goku is presented as this guy who is pure. He has no greed in him whatsoever. And the Saiyans pretty much represent everything Goku doesn't. Goku is kind, the Saiyans are not. Goku does not indulge in taking the lives of his enemies, and the Saiyans do. Goku is a low class warrior, and the Saiyans are elites. They are the best of the best. More specifically, Vegeta. Not only is a Vegeta an elite, but he is the prince of all Saiyans. So when Goku fights Vegeta, he's pretty much fighting everything that the Saiyan race stands for. I really like how the Saiyans are supposed to be the anti-Goku. We just found out that Goku's from an alien race known as the Saiyans, and now we're finding out what if Goku never hit his head as a child. He would be this really demented, twisted, and evil guy really, which is hard to imagine because of Goku's carefree nature. But it really shows that the Saiyans, more specifically Vegeta, have rubbed off on Goku. Goku, he never really knew what he wanted in life at this point in time. 
In Dragon Ball, what did Goku really want? We don't know. He pretty much just wanted to be the world's strongest by winning the martial arts tournament. But in Dragon Ball Z, the beginning of the Saiyan Saga, what does he want now? It's not really too clear, really. But after his fight with Vegeta, Goku seems to have an idea of what he really wants in life. Yes, he wants to fight Vegeta again, but later on this would blossom into him just wanting to fight strong people overall. And here's another example of how Vegeta and Goku are foils to one another. Both of them love to fight. They love it. But the difference is that Goku does it because he just likes to fight strong people. He really takes pleasure in fighting them. Whereas Vegeta, he likes to fight because he's evil, really, essentially. He just likes to kill and to kill because it really goes to show how much more powerful he is than everybody. Vegeta is an extremely prideful person. He can't comprehend the idea of anybody, especially a low-class warrior, putting up a good fight against him. Vegeta really did seem to get desperate and angry as he fought Goku. And Goku did get desperate as well. I mean, he had to use the Kaioken times 4 and Spirit Bomb. But he wasn't getting angry as he fought Vegeta. He was getting excited. He really wanted to fight him again, as I said multiple times. So that's why I really like Goku in this saga, because he blossoms into the person we see now. So now, allow me to talk about my final point. But before I do, then how about you subscribe and leave a comment. I'd really appreciate it. Anyways, the final point I want to discuss is between Gohan and Piccolo. Gohan and Piccolo have a pretty unique relationship. Gohan and Piccolo are more than just master and student. Yes, they first start off as that way because Gohan has to be trained by Piccolo to take on the Saiyans, but as the story progresses, they become more friends, really. Unfortunately, we don't get to see a lot of screen time of them just talking to each other, but it's okay for Dragon Ball standards. We get some brief dialogue by Gohan saying how he doesn't think Piccolo is all that bad of a guy. He thinks that he's just kind of grumpy, really. Not really evil to say. And Piccolo, he doesn't really like that at first because Piccolo is supposed to be this guy who is bent on chaos. I mean, hey, that was his original goal before being defeated by Goku. And because of the Saiyans, not only is he forced to team up with his worst nemesis, but he is forced to train his worst nemesis son into becoming a strong warrior. You'd think that Piccolo would have some real hatred towards Gohan because he is the son of Goku, but no, that's the complete opposite. Piccolo even ends up giving up his life to save Gohan because Gohan is the only person who has ever treated Piccolo like a friend. It's pretty heartwarming and in my opinion, this is the best death in Dragon Ball. Prior to that, we've had the death of Krillin and Master Roshi and Chaozu, but, but they never really felt like they left that much of an impact on the story. I mean, heck, Krillin got off screen killed. Really, come on now, that sucks. But Piccolo's death is my favorite because he did it for a selfless reason. He sacrificed himself to save his only friend. Gohan is the only person he would consider his friend, and the Demon King sacrificed himself to save his only friend. I really enjoyed that. It was a nice death, but hey, he got revived later, but not tripping. It was great for Piccolo. Anyways, that's gonna do it for the video. If you enjoyed this video, then hey, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Leave a comment, helps for the algorithm. Anyways, I'll catch you in the next one. Later.